AMG, what's up? Welcome. Like bright. In the building, 21 questions. Get this sorted out. Welcome. MJ, welcome and how are you? 21 questions with Folly Fresh. I'm your host, IC, IC, IC Music on the Instagram if you want to follow me. Uh, but good evening. Welcome. Richie in the building. Let's get my headphones in. Hope everyone is well. Fully fresh in the building, a green in the building. Are we going to get started? Hey. Now we had a question last week. Actually, let me get this screen. Hey, Ray, on your back. Welcome. We had a question last week. Let's see if anyone can get that question. Because um, nobody actually seemed to answer it. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. Ah, I can't find it here. Uh, the question was how many seconds in a year? Jeez. How many seconds in a year? Best man walking in a building. And ladies and gentlemen, this is 21 Questions. If this is your first time locked in, I'm your host, Icy. Um, and in 21 Questions, this is our live, Insta Live platform uh, where we take time to delve into the, the behind the scenes, actually, of who people are, asking them 21 questions and more within the allotted time. Um, and if you have any questions, I would love for you to put them in the question box. All right, there's a function at the bottom and you can use that. Um, but also please get involved through the comment section. If there's anything that you're feeling that's being said, if there's anything that you're connecting or with, we want to fill you in that comment section. So right about now, if I can have a round of applause in the comment section, just to know you're here, just to know you're in the building. Big up, Simply Andy, in the building. Mm -hmm. We're going to get started in a second. Who else we got in the building? Okay, yes. 21 questions, guys. Make sure if you are just um, joining us for the first time, link in our bio. Thank you, Brie. You know, I'm just trying to get me. <laughs> you know, um, uh, make sure you click the link in our bio. We have got over i think we've got 17 episodes now at the moment uh, where you can go back and listen to every single one of the interviews that we have had uh, we've had zizi mills ramal london william adwasi um bobby kasanga um who else have we had we've had um london jay uh so many people that have kind of shared their story um so i really love you to get involved and don't want you to miss out on that big up to me congratulations again loved that yesterday um, all right, without further ado, let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into it. I'm going to invite Folly Fresh inside and into the build. Folly, Folly. How's it going, bro? How you doing? I'm blessed, man. I'm really good. You're looking fresh today. Listen, what shirt is I this? Had, I had to get myself sorted out. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was a, it was about time. What did you have? Did you not have a haircut? No, nah, since March. No, nah. for real. Yeah. Is that why you was wearing your hat every single episode? There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Bro, go and check. Go and check all the twenty-one questions up till last week, and you'll see. The only thing I'm wearing is a hat because yeah. what was underneath that hat was disrespectful. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel after you got that haircut? Do you know what? Just all I'm gonna say is yeah, just keep an eye on the page in it. Like to, between between today and tomorrow, uh, I tell you, I, I actually felt like it was a, it was a life moment. Oh, where'd you get your haircut? Do you go to the same person or can you go anywhere? 
Um, most of the time, I try to stick with a barber that I've been with for a long time. So it's F, F the barber. And yeah. F'd up. In London, in Oval. But sometimes, because cause of where I live, I'm based now. I'm not based in London anymore, so I have to sometimes travel. But a lot of the time, I try to Same, to same. Things in. Yeah, yeah, try. try yeah, something. same. I'm, I'm, I'm way outside London. My barber is in London, but I can't, you know, I can't afford to just uh, roll up to any That's it. barber. <laughs> I gotta, yeah. I, even if I've got to travel, I've got to go. I've got to go all the way. Um, well, guys, welcome to 21 Questions. Polly Fresh, welcome. Everyone that's joining us, welcome to 21 Questions. This is the Sit Downs Live Instagram segment where we ask our guests all these questions, up to 21 questions and more to get an idea of the depth of who they are and what life is like behind the scenes. Um, and so we have Polly Fresh here today. I wanted to interview you because I see you from afar. I've seen you from way back. We used to come to our, to our house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, bust, just bust so much jokes. And just to see how far you've gone now, I really want to document that and, and share that story. Um, so what exactly. we've got set up is first we have... No, no worries. Uh, first thing we've got set up is um, your quick fire um, question. So it's like five minutes where you're going to ask questions. Don't think about them. First thing that comes to your mind, and let's hear what you say. Guys, welcome to joining us. We've got Anne in the building. We've got Miss 90 in the building. Who else we've got? Uh, who else we've got? Becky in the building. Um, and Millie, Simply Andy, and many more. All right, cool. Let's get into it. 21 questions. Let's get it. So let's put your timer up there. Your time starts from now. Okay, cool. Number one, favorite food? Uh, lasagna. Really? Yeah. Vegetable or, or meat? Uh, unfortunately, meat. <laughs> unfortunately. All right. Second question, favorite color? Uh, blue. Blue, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. You wear a lot of blue. Yeah. Um, next question is... Um, who are the special people in your life? Um, my wife, my children, my nuclear family, hmm. and supporters, people, yeah, my friends, my friends, my, my, my circle. Your circle, okay, cool. And what's your favourite item in your wardrobe? <sighs> oh, that one's hard. Um, it might be a suit. Favourite suit? Do you know what? There are, I have many suits that I see. <laughs> And they're all quite banging. I'll say, I have a really nice shirt I got recently. So, yeah, I'll say shirt. Where'd you get it from? Reese. Oof, Reese? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeez, that's not, um, that's, uh, not that's not Primark. Uh, that's the... it's, shopping, it's shopping smart. Ah, uh, okay. It was, like, proper, like, cheap. <laughs> corona sales, Corona sales. All right, cool. Uh, what inspires you the most? Um, my understanding, or my growing understanding of God's purpose for me. Come on, deep, deep, Pastor. Thank you. Um, what makes you angry? Ooh. Hardly anything, you know. It's weird. I don't get angry. Really? Oh, actually, bad driving. I get road rage. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't get road rage, man? Um, trust. What does someone have to do to bring out that road rage? Just something stupid, because obviously driving a car, cars, cars can be good, but they could also be very dangerous. In the road. Trust. <laughs> So doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. Oh, listen. Trust me, I've had my fair share of my fair share of crashes. Uh, introvert or extrovert? I'm an I'm an extrovert, but I actually love introverted people. Oh, you're you're saying so you're extrovert? Yeah. But you love introverted people. Yeah. How does that work? Um, it's just I think it's just it's just the process of peeling them. And get into okay. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Um, I wanted to ask, do you favourite Netflix program at the moment? Um, favourite Netflix program? What were we watching? I, I don't know what it's called, but it's something made by a Nigerian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it wasn't Nollywood. It wasn't Nollywood. It was probably Nollywood, yeah, but it's on Netflix and it's, and it's actually really good for them. Good okay, program. all right. Yeah. Um, what is your favourite holiday destination? You love to go, love to go. I don't go on holiday much. I travel for work, so... Um, mm. But I'd say the place that I love going back to, weirdly enough, is Dubai. What, uh, why weirdly? Pardon? Why, weird, why weirdly? Um, because... Um, it's, it's, it's an obvious place, but I, I feel oh, like okay. I'm always in awe as to... Because I go, even though I go regularly, every year I go... Um, let's say I go two, three, four times a year. 
the next year that I go, you just see that they've just made more advancements. In. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I hear that. One day I'll go. Um, <laughs> no, wait, one day. Maybe even God will use me to take you. You know? Uh, that's why we are doing this today. That's my ticket. Um, <laughs> um, finish this sentence. If I had eight million pounds, if I won the lottery and won eight million pounds, I would. Is, is, is this a trick, trick one? No, if you, so if you want eight million pounds, what would you do? <laughs> oh, what would I do? Um, <laughs> I would try my level best to invest in better, better schooling mm. for less privileged people in the motherland. Okay. Where's your motherland from? Um, I'm Nigerian. Um, Nigerian. Both, both my parents are Yoruba, so yeah. Okay, okay. I'm I think I'll just limit it to Nigeria across Africa. Across Africa, wonderful, beautiful. All right, last question. Do you have any OCDs? We got Mrs. Jaeger in the building. Yeah, I do actually. It's weird. What is it? And it's specific to my house. If someone puts something somewhere, especially I'm on the, on the limit, like, if my wife puts something somewhere, if it's not in the right position, I would I will adjust it and she hates <laughs> it. And I, and I actually can't help it. I always do it. And sometimes I'm conscious and I don't do it and then I'll still do it. So is that even like a, a cup? So the cup was a bit Anything. too... It could be a cup. It could be, an, it could be the letter we just received in the post. You place it on the table, but it was, wow. it was this way. I'll move it so it can stay this way. Don't ask wow. me. Wow. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, last question. What is your favourite, you know, your favourite personality trait for yourself? Um, just being a people person, a lover of people. I love, I love okay. Yeah. All right. Boop, boop, boop. Five minutes is up. Come on. No shaking. No stalling. That, no, that, that's just, that was to ease you in. <laughs> that, that, that was just to ease you in. That was light work. Oh, we we haven't we even, we even started. Oh. All right. Guys, welcome to 21 Questions. If you're just joining us, I am your host, IC. That's I-C-I-E. If you want to follow me, it's I-C-I-E Music on Instagram and Twitter. We are here, 21 Questions, with Mr. Folly Fresh. Uh, the microphone champion, that's what I call him, the microphone champion, international <laughs> microphone champion. Um, and we're just going to take time to delve into his story and find out a bit more about him. There's th things I found out about him that I did not even know. Oh, so goodness. we're going to delve. All right, cool. <laughs> his face, your face is shook. Um, all right. I, I used to do a bit of hosting myself. Um, like I've hosted, maybe in my lifetime, I've hosted about three, four, I think three or four weddings and I've done okay. event and I've done event hosting. Yeah. And man, it is not easy. It is not and I've seen like I've seen some of your videos and your promo and stuff. It make you make it look easy, but I know it's not 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 easy. Um, so I wanted to ask you, um, what are some like misconceptions about hosting that people have? Um, I think the obvious one is that we just stand there and we just talk <laughs> like verbal diarrhea. Like, <laughs> I, I, I say this to people, and um, I think one time I said it to a client. I was just like, well, if you feel it, like, was it a client? Well, not a client, but I said it to someone. I was like, if you feel like what I'm doing is easy, by all means, I can, I can call you up and you, yeah, can, yeah. you can come and do it. <laughs> Why, what happened? Was that a, like an argument you were having? It wasn't really an argument, but he was just like, oh, blah, 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 because I think he had a friend who was kind Good. of like, like giving me accolades and stuff like that. He was like, oh, boy, is it, it's just a talk. Isn't it just a talk? <laughs> and I was, I was like, a lot, and it's weird because um, even within the industry, within the events and industry in the UK and the wedding industry in the UK, I still have people saying that, oh, you guys have it easy because yours is just, it's just a turn up and talk. I'm just like, oh, no way. I'm just like, oh, yeah. What are some of the things that go into, in, into making it work for someone's I, wedding day? I would say probably try to try and narrow it down to five things i'll say number one is being able to read the audience mm. to read when you know when the mood is kind of low and you need to pick it up or when the mood is when the mood is, is a bit serious because you do get moments where i don't know someone might want to come in with a late parent or you know they might be emotional and you just don't obviously it's a wedding night it's as much as you want to kind of um you want to kind of mark the personal things in the life yeah. Etc., but you also want to make sure that it doesn't kind of drop the mood completely where everyone, yeah, is. you got know I me. Mean? So, there's reading the audience there's un and understanding how to maneuver, the, you know, the audience, etc. It's, it's being able to think on your feet because sometimes, well, 99.9999% of the time, <laughs> things don't go according to plan, yeah. so you have to be able to think, think on your feet. Like, we have some people like, um, um, 
Les New Beatrice of Les New and oh. um, and Gabby of um, A Flair to Remember. These are like wedding planners, so they they'd be able to, you know, and it, well, I won't say wedding, it, wedding and event planners. And I've worked with them a number of times over the, over the space of the last maybe half a decade or a decade. And they, sometimes information doesn't get fed to you because it's just not appropriate. And you have to think on your feet. You have to be intuitive. You have to know how to, you know, just be able to do impromptu things. Um, in addition to that, people think you're just an MC. There's been many, many times over my career where I've carried tables. I've served as the barman. <laughs> no, I'm, being, I see, I'm being so serious. I even rolled up my sleeve, took my blazer, and became a server. I was serving jollof rice. Um, yeah, I became a parking <laughs> attendant. You know, like just do it because obviously not everybody kind of like puts things in place to ensure that everything is covered. And so where you have the experience and where you can try and make life easy, and this is not obviously not as the reception is going on, but kind of in and around that kind of stuff. And then just being able to chip in and being able to, to help out um, where you can because you have that experience and you know, okay, I could be a solution to this problem. Yeah. Um, other things also include um, just being, being able to kind of draw on things that will kind of make things memorable for the couple. Whether that's, um, com that's, whether that's conversation beforehand, yeah. kind of being able to kind of put yourself in a position where you, a lot of the times, I think what, what kind of makes me stand out in terms of with weddings and stuff is there's been times where I've met the couple a week before their wedding day, but everybody, the parents and family and friends assume that I'm like a, long, a lifelong friend <laughs> of the couple, but that's mm. because that's intentional. That's obviously, that's what I do to kind of put myself in a position where, okay, now I know about you. Now, mm -hmm. your different circle of friends that are also going to be present. I know about your family members and blah, blah, blah. And I'm able to kind of maneuver and ensure that everybody gets a piece of the pie and everybody says, oh, yeah, he made, he made the fun for us. He made the yeah. fun for us. He made the fun for us. He made the fun for us. And also, at the same time, you're, you're managing um, your conflicts, managing or resolving conflicts in the sense where sometimes you get people at the wedding who might not see eye to eye or even yeah. if parents even yeah. family members, even friends, you know, and you have to be able to, and sometimes people are just excited and really noisy and loud and brash, and you have to be able to control that in a very respectful manner, Yeah, and still try to keep things together, you know, so there's so much, so much more. I can go on, I can go on. I love it. How, how, do, you, how do you manage um, that loud, that one loud table? I've had, I remember having tables where that one is the one you have to constantly be like, all right, guys, all right, guys. Is there, is there a method that you use to cite, to make sure that table kind of is in order throughout the, the evening? Do you know what? I see, if, if, I say, if I say to you that everything I do on every single wedding is never, ever planned. I, don't, wow. I have no idea what I'm going to do on the day. It's literally like, and this is what I say to people, like some things, there's a certain reason why you can't really like um, put a finger on someone when they're doing a certain thing. Yeah. It's, it's not like it's I literally don't operate from a human form it's literally God kind of like feeding through me and enabling me to do what I need to do kind yeah. of, you know what I mean and I don't say this lightly and I don't say it to sound over spiritual but trust me like it's I'm a very I'm very much an off the dome person and yes the, I have experienced the draw because I know how I've done things I've, I've done what over 400 weddings so I know oh my gosh I know, yeah I know what I'm doing kind of thing but at the same time I still rely on I'm like God okay you need to kind of I, I, every time before I touch the mic, I pray. I go into my little corner, pray. I say, "God, you need to kind of let me say the right thing." So there have been times where I've I've kind of sat on the fence with something I've said, and I really had to like say, "Okay, God, you need to like make me <laughs> bring everybody back on side because that's really really good." And well, thankfully that doesn't really happen much anymore. But I don't I don't have a one size fits all kind of approach to things. I think, and that's and that's the beauty of it. Different people are very different, and that's why I love people because you can't just take or you, even if it's a Nigerian wedding. You might have an Nigerian wedding, but like, oh, okay, this is typical of an Nigerian wedding. <coughs> get loud, yeah. and noisy, but you can't have that one size fits all approach to things. You have to mm -hmm. approach it in a unique way each time. Yeah, each but time. just to be respectful, and sometimes you have to be really cheeky, but respectful, cheek, respectful but cheeky. And then the people are like, oh, okay, this MC, you're doing, you're doing a very slim man. You don't <laughs> take nonsense, so, <laughs> so they know they know not to play with you. you know? I love that. Thanks to authority in the, in the right way. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, I wanted to ask then, let's go back a bit. Tell me, uh, I guess, about the conflict of expectation versus purpose. So for you, you studied accounting um, and that was kind of the, that was the goal. That was where you were heading. That's where, you know, your family knew you were heading, etc. Uh, but in your heart, doing that job day in, day out, it wasn't satisfying. 
this was something that you knew, you know, from doing events, and, and, you know, that this was ingrained in you, that I can do this. Yeah. How did you transition from doing something that everyone expected you to do? <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Amen. Bless you. Amen. Bless you. How did you how did you transition from doing something that everyone expects you to do to actually trying, you know following your purpose and and living in that? Um, that's a that's a really good question. Um, I would say um, the, the the goal or the idea was never ever to kind of be like I want to be a presenter. I want to be a, a host. Or I guess for me, um, like you said, the was my, my my financial financial management was my um, basically my and occupationally. Um, however, when I was in uni, when I was in college in uni, I had the opportunity to kind of do things. Um, someone said Corona. Oh no, God forbid! I reject it. That's, that's bless. Um, it's just hay fever. Just hay fever. Um, so hay fever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of like had the opportunity to kind of, I won't say test the waters, but kind of be launched out in that kind of way, and opportunities kept on arising. You know, and um, it was like the thing that I kind of dabbled in just for the sake of it. It was, you know, I just kind of felt it was something natural. I didn't really have to try too much. As long as I understood the brief or the, mm -hmm. the, the event, I could just launch myself. Um, but then it came to, it, where this all began was it came to a point, I see, where doing an, a, a white-collared corporate job, um, which some people call a nine-to-five, for me, it was more so at eight or 11, 12, like, wow. That was my life, and I was just like, I just, I can't, I can't do this. Mm. Oh, you're frozen. Am I frozen? Are you back? Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> um, so yeah, so it was for, for me. I just, I just couldn't live that way. I mean, it was quite detriment to like health wise, detriment to like things like I wasn't being able to spend a lot of time with family, etc. And so. At, at the same time, I had already kind of like made strides to kind of like implement something. And I, I would, I, I'm going to be very honest and say it didn't just happen straight away. Like it took me about three and a half, four years to kind of like say, okay, I'm going to try, I'm going to try and like go into this and wow. go into this fully. So I had a dear friend by the name of um, Afilabi, aka A Dot Comedian. And he had seen me like in the earlier years, like when at college and uni, and was like, follow up. Yeah. You're, wasting, you're wasting something that you've got. Wow. And then um, I remember there was this one one year, I think it was 2012, 2012. And um, you know when you have crossover night, like, you're heading into the new year. Mm -hmm. They were like, the person you're next to, pray for them and tell them, um, and pray for them that God will enable them to see the things that he's placed in their hands and obviously it will, it will, it will make way for them. And he was obviously, he was praying. And then we, we also walked on because we lived on the same street. And he said, follow that. You know, like I, a lot of times I pray and I, and I pray and I mean it, but this time I prayed for you in a way that I've never prayed for you before. Wow. And he was like, I think it's based on the fact that we've been talking about this for, for many years now. You're not, you've not done anything about it. Um, and so, yeah, and then like, lo and behold, like I was fortunate to have someone that came in my corner. Obviously, we've been friends since we were like, what, six, seven years old. Wow. So, you know, that was, that was, that was handy. Um, and f for me, it wasn't, it wasn't so much a transition. It was like, okay, I still kind of kept the Nigerian mentality of I'm going to work, I'm going to work in, in my corporate job. And if this happens, it happens. Yeah. And if it doesn't, I'm still going to work. And then obviously, like I said, I intentionally kind of put myself in the market and things, that, you know, God kind of used different opportunities and stuff to kind of make the business grow and the service that I was providing grow and grow and grow. And then literally just hit a point where I was like, okay, I'm at a crossroad now. Do I continue with my corporate job that is taking like 12, 13, 14 hours of my life? Mm. Or put my energy in something that I believe that, you know, God has definitely placed it. Because I've known I've had certain personality traits from a very young age, actually. I don't know what it was, but I just knew connecting yeah. with people, you know, enjoying, pe enjoying being in the presence of people. Um, you know, like just facilitating things and stuff like that. I, I've just known that from a very young age. And so I guess, like you said, it was just kind of where purpose kind of met. And then I was like, okay, look, this is me. I enjoy doing this. I don't enjoy con number crunching. I'm going to do this. And then yeah. know, with, with, with some prayer. Yeah, here I am. I love that. So I love that because when I talk to, like, because I work with young people a lot, when I talk to them, one of the things that I like to dispel as a myth is, um, you can be anything. Mm. You can be anything you want to be. No, you can't. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. You can't be anything you want to be. Mm -hmm. You can position yourself yeah. to be anything you want to be. 
but you can't just wish it to happen. Yeah. You've got to actually be in uh, an alignment with where that thing is going. And for you, just like you said, knowing your strengths, knowing that you're not a comedian, because you could have gone down the, the comedic route. Oh, I tried. I tried. Yeah, I tried. <laughs> doing stand-up comedy. Early, early on, <laughs> this is not me. It's not. <laughs> so knowing that in your person, in yourself, knowing that, enable you to say, right, this is what I'm good at. This is how I'm going to align myself. And then all those things, um, you know, kind of fell into place. And I think that's a, it's a good for young people and us just as adults to kind of do that digging. What am I good at? Yeah. What is it I'm passionate about? What is it that I'm lo- what I love? So I don't yeah. think we do that as much anymore. Yeah. The older we get, I guess, the more we settle for where we are. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's greatness in us, but we have to dig. We've got to dig for that greatness yeah. and find it. Um, is, there a, is there a particular wedding where you knew or event that you knew that, oh, 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 this is taken off. This is this is taken off. For some people, it's like you know, if they were doing music, it might be a song, yeah. etc. But was there a particular wedding or event that you said, "Yeah, I this think, is me"? <laughs> I think I think it was gradual. It wasn't like a straight. It wasn't like one wedding. So mm. I remember the first wedding I did was in early part of 2015, and it was with my really good friend, and she was basically saying that I think the way she sprung on me, she was like, "I'll be fun at MC by the way," because I was helping her plan the wedding, and just kind of like just help just as a friend would and she was like oh we found an MC by the I was like oh okay by the way oh, who is it and she was like yeah yeah sitting in this room I was like oh wow who is it and she was like yeah it's you I was like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> literally I'm not even joking that's how I'm wow uh, husband to be at the husband who's her husband now was um he was based in, in the United States and he was on on the FaceTime and he was like yeah man yeah we went I was like I was like wow I was like oh, all right Said, are you guys sure like <laughs> yeah. so that's how that happened um that wedding went quite well although i was pretty nervous because i was like hold on this is someone's wedding day if i mess yeah. up yeah this is it so that went quite well um r- randomly after like a few months after i had another wedding and i didn't know these people from adam they didn't know me but I, they reached out to me somehow um i did their wedding their wedding went even better than my friend's wedding nice and then there was another wedding and I think after three or four weddings, I think literally, because every wedding that was going well, I was like, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, it went well, it didn't go terrible. And I was just thinking, oh, you know, that beginning is like, it goes well, it goes well, it goes well, it goes well. Then it, and it's going to crash. And then it just kept on steadily, like, getting better and getting better. And I, and I think after three or four, I see, that's when I thought, I said, the penny dropped. I said to my wife, yeah, who was my girlfriend at the time. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Yes, yeah, so this, this is God. God was God, like was really like pruning me whilst I was in college, whilst I was in uni. This, yeah, this is this is where this is where I'm supposed to be. And touching on what that, touching on what you mentioned about nerves, um, I don't. Do you still get nerves? Does that still come up, or because of that period, it's gone? How? Or, no. Okay, then. So it doesn't. No more. Okay. No, no, no. The thing is, I, I don't know if it was. Uh, it was nerves because I think number one, it was my friend, and number two, I'd never done it before. Mm-hmm. After the first time, second time, I won't say I was nervous. I was kind, of, I was kind of like excited, but I was just like, oh, like I don't know these people. This is interesting because at least with my friend, there were people that I knew in the audience or whatever, so I could give them eye contact. Whereas exactly. with the second one, I knew nobody, but it was amazing because <laughs> I was like, well, that way there's no pressure. You can just be yourself and you can just do. And then yeah, so I don't. It's weird. I don't. I don't know what nerves are. <laughs> That's nice. My... But it's, it's a great um... feeling not to know it, do you? Is there a difference between doing it in the UK and doing it international? Um, what, and, what was your, and what was your first international gig? Uh, I, I think there is slightly a difference. Um, the structure and technicalities are different because different countries, they can... T- like I think in the UK, we don't, have, we don't specifically follow a certain structure, whereas in other countries, they're quite regimented with how they do okay. things and they don't really allow for for that like, space and room to kind of do things in a different way and it's all got to do with the fact that with with the uk the setup is just a bit different where you have different people different service providers or product providers coming together whereas abroad a lot of the time most of the things will come from one kind of company and then oh. the symbols coming from here but also like like i said they just they just like to do certain things at a certain time um my first destin- destination wedding Oh, did I say destination event? Okay, let me just say destination wedding. My first destination wedding was in that same year that I started, actually. Wow. Um, so I did, I did, um, I did a birthday. I did a birthday. Um, 
hosted a birthday and one of the attendees at the birthday, her daughter was getting married. Mm. And she kind of just told her daughter, I've, I've saw this fantastic host, you need to have him at, at your wedding. <laughs> and then, so yeah, so she then literally called me that same weekend and was like, oh, my mom's, I don't usually listen to my mum, but my mum seems to have thought she found a fantastic host. And I remember when, I, when she first called me and I said hello, she was like, oh, you don't sound, I don't want to put this in a video, but she, you don't sound like an uncle. And I, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, she, and I was like, um, I was like, uh, hi, I, I, I'll kind of put her in the back and then, yeah, and then yeah. I started talking. And then actually, I didn't know her, her wedding was abroad. I just thought it was somewhere, it, 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 that basically it was in Spain. And I thought she said she was in Spain, so that, which is near. <laughs> so I said to her, I was like, yeah, of course I can come to Spain. She was like, yeah. she was like, Spain. Spain. She was like, Spain as in Espanol. I was like, oh, I was like, oh. I was like are you sure? She was like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that was my first one, and it actually, it was phenomenal. I think till yeah. today, from that from that family alone, I think I've done three weddings. Mm-hmm. From everyone that attended that wedding, I think I've done like six or seven weddings. Oh my gosh, it's been, it's been amazing. How, how important would you say relationships are then, in terms absolutely. of the way you absolutely. interact and your absolutely. your? For me, yeah. like it's not about just me kind of showing my ability. I my intention is to <coughs> whether it's a wedding whether it's an international event abroad, whether it's a, an event in the UK, whether it's corporate, whether it's commercial, whether it's private, I have to literally wear the, 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 your vision hat on my head and on my shoulder. Mm. I, need to yeah. I need to be fully immersed in what I'm doing. I need to understand what it is that you want. And then I'm also going to kind of give you an indication of what it is that I'm going to do to either not only bring about your, well, I won't say either, but not only bring about your expectation, but also to surpass it. You know, and so my aim is always to kind of like, okay, I know we spoke about this, but in my head I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to add fireworks, but then I'm going to bring, like, literally a flamethrower as well to kind of make the event absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Because for me, it's all about experiences for people. It's not just about, oh, you did another wedding. For me, I want people to look back on their event, their wedding, their birthday, the, mm. the whatever it was, the advert, and be like, wow, we're, we're so happy we got this, this, this guy because he, he smashed it. And that's that's what I want. I just want to create an amazing experience that sticks in your brain forever and ever. I love that, man. Trust me. And I, I, I totally connect with that because when in my small little career of doing hosting and everything, it was, it was the same kind of feeling of when you're, because you're doing this for someone and you're representing them. Yeah. Everybody that looks at that host is it's going to reflect on the people that chose them. Yeah. So if you're at that event or if you're at that wedding, um, if it goes well, they're going to be like, oh, give me the recommendation. If it goes bad, they're going to be like, uh, you chose wrong. Uh, yeah. So, no, that's good. I love that. Tell me quickly uh, about um, your Visa Paris event that you did, that, how, how that experience was. So, with that, I think, I guess, I was, yeah, that was that. So, basically, that was my corporate job um, with Open Visa. And they literally were like, they wanted to try and find an in-house presenter rather than paying a lot of money for an external person so it gives them oh. an opportunity so they were just like oh yeah they just want people to say whoever is interested can you send us a one minute recording and I sent it in um, and yeah literally within, within I think I went home the next day I came back they were like yep yeah, so um, yeah you're definitely doing this I was like oh okay <laughs> and, um, so they got me in um, and literally they were just like oh there was a script but they were like okay obviously try and do whatever you can with it um, and I was like, yeah. And then it was it was interesting because when I came back, the CEO even was was like, he came to me and was like, what are you, what are you doing in this in this in this office? Like working number crunching. Like wow. you should be on TV. And this is this is like the CEO. I mean, this guy is on like fifty million annual salary kind of thing. Like the big boss. Yeah. Come on. And down to everyone saying, oh, you know, please put some respect on our superstar. But I was like, okay. Cut. <laughs> But yeah, so it, you know that was that was absolutely amazing. Um, literally, five star. Everything was like even the Formula E boss. He came and spoke to me, and everything was on. I was just like, oh, maybe we can try and come, you know, forge a contract where you know we can get you back quite often. Wow. But obviously, they don't do it in the same city. They do it in various different cities. And, you know, yeah. So. Come on, man. Yeah. Man. Um, God is good. Guys, welcome. If you are just joining us, uh, this is Twenty One Questions with Folly Fresh. Um, and I'm your host, I see. Um, if you're watching this on repeat, um, if you're watching back the replay, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're joining us. Um, 
Polly's just been taking us through his journey. It's amazing. It's, it's inspirational because you're someone who um, you do a lot, mm. but you don't say a lot. Mm. You just do a lot. Yeah. And if, it only yeah. takes digging for people to know um, like how far you've come and all, all the stuff that you've kind of achieved. Yeah. Um, so, what's that? What are the, where are the from that? Yeah. So, with all that you've with all that you've done, there was a point where you kind of got burnout and you were just just doing doing too much. It was almost going too well. Yeah. Tell me about that period of time when you was in that burnout period. I think do you know what you know like when you're on when you're on a ride and or if you're doing something and like obviously the hosting and presenting I enjoy it. Um and so like you just kinda of feel like, okay, it's not work or whatever, but then you just forget that it is work because it's tasking mm. the body, it's tasking in the brain, etc. And so I think, you know, you learn different sides of you or different sides of your business or your service that you're providing all the time, whether it's marketing, whether it's, you know, service delivery, it's custom service, but whatever, aftercare, whatever it is you learn. And for me, it was, I had to have the burnout. That wow. Kind of period or session or whatever event occur for me to understand that, okay, for now, now you've got to manage your diary better. You know that this is your capacity, mm. your limit. Because I would do things like, I'll fly, I'll do, an, I'll do an event in London, um, whether it's a wedding, a birthday, a corporate event, whatever it is, and then I'll fly out to another country, maybe in Europe or whatever, then from there I'll fly out to another country, and then I'll fly back to London, and then I'll have to fly back, and that, it just didn't make sense, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> International. So, yeah, so I got really like, I, physically I got really, I got really sick, I got really ill, and the people that have to kind of deal with that are, is the people within my home. You know, and it's not fair on them because it's like, as much as you're thriving, you're also being irresponsible because you're doing things. Yeah. Like, you know, so and so now I've learned to kind of like, you know, that okay, this is my limit and this is this is where I can go. And anything else like that, I'm not happy to say no. There's many other fantastic MCs and service providers out there, presenters out there that I'll be happy to recommend. And that's just how I am. I don't, yeah. There's there's this there's, there's room at the top for everyone. I'm, it's not like I have to take everything. Do you get what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How do you now um, kind of de decompress and excel after an event or a wedding? How do you take time for yourself? Um, so I try to operate within, like I said, a certain capacity. So let's say, for example, in a seven-day working week, if I have to cover events, I probably won't do more than like, three. And depending on what kind of season it is, if it's like high season, I probably won't do more than three or a like, stretch four. And if it's low season, then... In a, four in a week? Yeah, yeah, three or four in a week. But when I say when I say events, I mean some of them might just be like not weddings and not all not not four weddings. Like maybe I might have two weddings, a birthday, and then I might have like I don't know a recording for like some right. content or whatever, or do an advert or do whatever. But not necessarily like bang out four weddings back to back. Right. That's that's way too much. Um, um, there was actually one time actually I had to take. Netizzle, um, DJ Netizzle will, will basically verify that I took like nine paracetamols or ibuprofen at an event because I literally I was, yeah, I was going to fall down and die. You took nine paracetamols? Over the space of the whole day, yeah, because I was just literally, <sighs> it, and, and stuff like that was really bad because like, I threw up twice at the event. When there was a break, I went to the toilet, I threw up twice. Trust me, it's not worth, no amount of money is worth, worth like you putting yourself through. Wow. But I learned the hard ways in it, so thank God yeah. for being able to learn as well. <laughs> um, how how do you go about? No, I don't want to answer. That. I was, was going to ask that. I don't want to ask that. Um... <laughs> but I do. All, 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 all I would say is that I, I do. I do like factor in rest. It's a conscious effort. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So whether it's just like sitting down and chilling at home, or mm. just yeah, just I don't know going for a swim or I, I don't really swim that much living that life but yeah just do, just do just chill in just chilling out yeah I was gonna I was gonna I'll ask you I was gonna ask about how do you go about pricing yourself because you're exerting so much energy you're out there you're away from family you're away from friends you are pouring a lot into other people's lives in a sense mm -hmm. how then do you price your value and and, and what you're what yeah. you're given what you're presenting so for me, I think there's just various different factors that, that enable me to reach a certain um, service rate. Um, and that's, obviously, that's things like the time commitment I'm giving to you. Mm. Um, there's things like the skill, the level of skill. Um, yes. That I know that you're, you're getting um, 
like basically kind of top end kind of level of skill. Come on, talk that talk. <laughs> and experience. Um, not even in a kind of cocky way, but it just kind of like, because of kind of built that experience, thankfully, um, I'm able to kind of like, obviously there's a lot of things that I know now and there's things that I probably know that you may not even think about and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's experience, it's skill, it's time, it's, um, what else is it? It's, you know, like just, just kind of added value, innovation, all, like, all these different things come into like, that and then that's where kind of like things kind of that's that's kind of how I kind of move in terms of like meeting people at a service from a service kind of price point. Mm -hmm. like, so it's not just necessarily okay, I'm working for you for six hours. No, 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 no. Time is only a factor, there's other different factors that come sure. through. So, yeah, so and obviously, like I said, like the kind of you're not getting a fully fresh of three years ago, two years ago, or even one year ago, you're getting the fully fresh of like who has like. Almost, like, almost 10 years of experience now so you're gonna have to pay for that basically. talk that talk <laughs> um one thing i did like i mentioned i was very surprised i didn't know you were married i didn't even know you had a child how many children have you got two two yeah yeah, two. yeah. Uh, you know i just i just i, I keep that um, in fact let me let you ask, ask your question yeah no because <laughs> that's what that's what i wanted to lead to like you you're out there but you're not out there mm -hmm. and so if somebody was to just go by your Instagram profile it will be like, you know, fully fresh, da 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 da. It was only when I was searching and I found an old interview you did. Yeah. And you mentioned, oh, I've got to help get little one to sleep. I was like, little what? Yeah. <laughs> and so I wanted to ask, yeah, I wanted to ask, um, is that something that you do? Is that something on purpose where you keep those um, worlds separate? Yeah. yeah. I mean, okay. this, this page is specifically, and I know I've, I've got a stick from um, the big boss, aka the wife. Um, that obviously I should keep it as it's intended. Like obviously you don't see Nike, Adidas, or like the deck directors or whatever, or even the creative directors kind of going in it and putting up like silly things or whatever. So she was like, but keep it what it is and what it needs to be. Um, and so, I'm, but I've always even operated from that kind of point anyway. Like this is a this is a especially this page that obviously everyone's viewing me from is a business account account. Yeah. It's, strictly for business and although I might even sometimes like show that my personality and make jest and joke and laugh and whatever, you never see me putting up like my family or like things from a personal perspective because that's just the game. Different people everyone's different, you know, yeah. from, different stroke, different fault. But for me, it, this is not what this is about. Um I might have a million and one other pages for all of that kind of stuff. If you know you know. If you don't you don't <laughs> but I'm uh, <laughs> I'd rather just keep them separate. And plus, mm. I just I come from the the school of thought where th that kind of like, that kind of side to my life is so precious to me. I don't really need to be pulling out out and blasting. Wow. Yeah, I, I like that. You know, I like because I guess we're definitely in an age um, where privacy is is undervalued. Yeah, yeah. And sharing is over overrated. Yeah. And I remember back, you know, there's a Jay Z lyric where he says. If it wasn't for these pictures, you wouldn't see me at all. Yeah, exactly. And I love that lyric because it says, it goes back to that era where there was mystique around people. You didn't yeah. know as much as you know now. And that kept certain things away from people. Um, and I think I myself, I'm trying to get back to that stage where it's, uh, I'll show you certain things, but there's certain things you don't need to know. And there's certain things that you don't need to see. There's certain things that we can keep for ourselves and, and that will be our own story. Yeah. Um, and when the time comes to share it, then cool. Uh, but I think there is a pressure, this fear of missing out, of oversharing. Yeah. And I think we're, we're in a stage now where that over, it's almost like there is a backlash from that. Mm -hmm. And people are now retreating and thinking, okay, I need to be a bit, bit more um, yeah. wise and a bit more savvy about what I share. Yeah. Um, how, how is it being a husband and a father, managing both those two roles? Um... <laughs> Being a husband is, I don't know, I guess we've been together for so long. Um, so it's just like, it's it's amazing, but also because my wife is like my homie. Like she's like, obviously she's my lover, but she's like by... She's a homie lover, friend. She's, she's, my, she's my day one. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, that's, I mean, she, she, in fact, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm more privileged. She has to put up with me rather than me putting up with her. Um, what does she have to put up with? Because sometimes I'm just like one one thing, and I admit this. 
on Instagram Live is that out, <laughs> outside of the house, I am like an energizer body. But at home, sometimes I'm as boring as whatever. I'm just quiet or sometimes I just sleep and I just sit down and like, yeah. So sometimes I kind of exert too much energy outside. I'm just like, there's actually not much left in the tank. Um, and then sometimes I have too much energy at home and I just annoy her. And she's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> So you know, I'm like, I'm like the different two two different extremes. Um, but being a husband is is a blessing, is a privilege to have someone that's just committed to me, and you know, just cares for me and loves me unlimitedly, and as do I. Um, and being a father is just special, man. I just, it's yeah, it's it's one of those things that when you hear like before you get to that stage, you're like, oh yeah, it sounds amazing. But when you're in it, it's like it's under it's indescribable. It's just so it's such a huge blessing, man. That these. Mm. These little ones look up to me and they're like, yeah, you're daddy. I'm just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is there anything? Is there anything that you have learned from them, from being children, and learned about life in them being just little children? Because children, um, I think they are the, they are sometimes the purest form of what life is about yeah. in the way they approach things, in yeah. the risks that they take, in the mm-hmm. fear they don't have. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you've seen from your children that has taught you about life? I think that's the biggest thing for me, the, the fact that um, the, the lack of fear, it's just like, it's so, like because they're such in such a pure state, they haven't been nurtured to know fear. So it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, like my daughter will fully run towards a wall and not even slow down. And you're thinking, well, hold on, do you not see that wall? She's like, <laughs> yeah, I can run. Like in her mind, it's like she can run through it. And I was like, oh, I, maybe I need to be like that kind of thing. So yeah, the lack of fear, because sometimes I've, you know, I'm, I've been my own hindrance. No, not so much, many a time I've been my own hindrance in terms of like, I have a living in up, 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 or just doing whatever it is. And it's just like, yeah, I can just like, sometimes I was watching her, I seeing her grow and the courage, not saying mm-hmm. that I have the courage, but sometimes just the courage to kind of just press and just do, do things and like, you know, without second guessing or whatever. Do your due diligence, but then just go with it. So that's, I think that's the biggest thing. And then patience, because these, these children teach you, if you don't have patience, they will, Daddy, no. what's this? Daddy, what's this? I'm like, oh, Father Lord, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cute. Trust it's cute. me, trust and me. They know, oh, the, they know the answer. They'll still ask you. I'm holding a banana. Daddy, what's that? You know what <laughs> Don't ask me questions. Don't ask me questions. Can't play. <laughs> um, what type of parents do you hope to be? Um, I, I hope to be the kind of parent where I build an open, transparent relationship with my daughter where she, even in, in the best of things and in the not so great of things, that she can come and talk to me mm-hmm. and confide in me and just communicate with me openly and honestly without feeling that oh, I'm going to judge her. Or even if I have to chastise her, you know, I'll do it in love, you know, and just kind of also for her to see that I love her mum, I treat her mum with respect, I care for her mum. Like, that's the kind of, I want to be that example that they see and be like, okay, I want to be like that. That's the basically the kind of mm. parent and father I pray to God that I am. Yeah. Why is that important to you? Um, that they're open, that they feel that openness and transparency? Um, I mean, I guess maybe because I know how I was with my parents and my, my, my parents were quite militant. Um, and so something I would be able to talk to them about. Um, and a lot of times, a lot of things I weren't able to. But then who do you turn to? Your peers who are going through the same thing as you and who may um, advise you in the wrong way, give you, you know, bad advice, etc. So I just wanted to see me as her dad, but also see me as a friend, or not her, mm-hmm. them to see me as, as their friend, you know, and, um, and just someone who's not only an example, but someone who's like, you know, like they can, it's like they're on a journey with me, like they're not like, not like the headmaster and they're like, they're just watching, but we're kind of in this together. Yeah, because yeah. like, obviously that in that case I'll be their first example. Mm-hmm. Also, and I'll just kind of not 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 just I, but myself and my wife will be like the, the you know that kind of sanctuary for them before they kind of go out into the world. And if the world mm-hmm. is telling them different, we, we're kind of guiding them in truth and in and the right in, in in righteousness, if you want to quote that, or in yeah. Right and in yeah, yeah. Tell me about your faith and 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 what it kind of means to you. For me, it's. It's the core of who I am. Um, I think I've just gone through so many things in life, and not 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 many crazy things or things that are like 
well devastating but I've gone through many things in life and I've hit certain points in my life where I'm just like definitely wasn't me this it just like there's something else operating and working for my good and I just know this because it just doesn't make sense and I didn't do anything to facilitate influence or I could take myself out of a situation or whatever so yeah so for me it's it's the core driver as to who I am um I, I yes I was brought up in the church but I actually came to the realization for myself that yeah that God is like the author and finisher of me my being my faith my life and yeah it drives it drives my interaction and relation with people like I put people before me I love people I don't judge people um I give people ch a chance maybe two chances um you know and I think that all it all stems from from the core of my existence the core of my being and that's my faith and my belief in God and, and in Jesus Christ and for me it's like understanding my faith like obviously different people have in different interpretations of christianity but for me it's it's that sacred relationship that first sacred relationship between you and this all-knowing invisible god that is very very real and very very present so yeah. like i said i've seen his handwork in my life so that's that's just how it is people people may argue and people may have their own reservations but yeah and it's factual. It's not disputable. It's, it's, <laughs> it's not disputable. It's not, yeah. It's not, uh, it's not. Is there one quality above all that you love about God the most? What, what would that be? Um, he, he's unending, unconditional love. Because honestly, like, it's something that we raise as a prayer point in my home every day. Because it, just ma it's, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. It's like, imagine you made a robot. And you told the robot, obviously I know we're not robots, but you gave the robot free, free will. And you said, all you require it to do though is to kind of honor you in, a, in, you know, in the best way possible, in a, in a way that's beneficial for the robot. And the robot just done, does, sorry, my phone's here. Um, it, and the robot just does things that are against you all the time, but you love the robot, you nurture the robot, you look after the robot, you care for the robot, and your plan and, and your desire for the robot is for the robot to just be blessed, be. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's every day it's just like I'm just like, and sometimes you know when you know you do wrong, you know, like, oh, have mercy on me. And God is there, like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready anytime. I'm good, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Like, what? How does that even make sense for me? It's, like, <laughs> it's so true. I love it now. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, man. Um, we're kind of we've got about a couple more minutes left. I wanted to ask um, two, back to two or three more questions. One was, where do you? <laughs> get these suits from <laughs> like you i hope you pay i hope you tip your tailor because the way your suits fit are crazy where are you getting them from and how many have you got do you know what? it's funny because when we went into lockdown one of the ways i wanted to pick myself up was to try and make little like on my phone i have so much content but i don't put it out there because I just sometimes I don't feel it ties in with the brand. But anyway, one one of the videos I did was in lockdown. I, wanted to, I actually was going through my wardrobe and counting how many suits I've got. Then I remembered there's still some suits in the suitcases and stuff like that. So this is not even all of them. So actually, if I'm honest with you, I think I have over about 30, 40, like 30, 40 suits. And um, and then that's just suits because sometimes I've been I've got, I had like trousers and blaze and trousers and waistcoat made or just a blazer oh. made, whatever. So if we're talking about you know tailoring. It's plenty, but it comes. It, it's, it's required because it comes with a job. And yeah, you know, trust when, me. When you're called fully fresh, you can't like not look fresh. You know what I mean? So, trust <laughs> me. So one has to. One has to. It's all. Part of the brand. Like, yeah, it is. It is. hundred percent. But um, but yeah, um, yeah. I've got loads of suits, but it, I think the way the way that comes about is um, some people like approach me and they want to kind of go into partnerships or whatever. So we have like branding deals, and others, you know, I've just like kind of built good relationships with them and then they've just produced like fantastic pieces and like, I've just gone back to them for more. So nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Last, well, second to last question if we have time, um, is how would you like to be remembered? We don't know how long we're down here for. Yeah. Um, when you go, how would you like to, how would that like people to remember you and who you are? Um, so I just saw the comments, someone was like, oh, who's your tailor? <laughs> That's beach. I have, I have three main ones that I kind of go to, but I don't know. I just I'm mindful for time, so DM me and I'll and I'll let you know. <laughs> I tag them all the time in my pictures. Um, I'll tell you this, huh? 
um, I would say, sorry, I forgot the question. Oh, is it like, how, how would you like to be remembered? Oh, I'd love to be remembered as someone who is um, a, definitely a lover of God and a, an, exa- an extension of what Jesus Christ is, what, what Jesus Christ is and was when he was um, physically present on this earth. And then um, I would also love to be known as the man who just loves people. He just wanted the best for people. He tried to bring out the best in people. Um, and just kind of, yeah, just love people for, for the fact that they're people. They're, they're part of the, the brotherhood or the sisterhood of the human race. Yeah, yeah love that. Come on. Uh, last question then is, do you have a question for me? Ooh, yeah, actually. Um, and this stems from, from the very beginning. I was going to say, so when are we going to see you kind of like, launching into the whole presenting hosting role because funnily enough I think one of my earliest experiences before I even got into the industry was obviously I, I, I obviously I've known you for quite some time anyway and I was just I always knew that you you have an amazing way with people and you know you know you, you, you yeah you just you're, you're kind of basically a whole song I just also I see that whole song <laughs> oh, thank yeah, you. so do you have plans to kind of like you know yeah. Do, do hosting. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I? I think because of this platform, I think the sit down has really um, given me the the training ground for it. Mm. Um, and my friend, one of my good friends, big like Elizabeth, she always said that you know you should go into hosting, you should go into hosting. But I was just like, mm, I don't. I'm I'm an introvert. I don't like attention, and hosting puts you on like the front line. Yeah. But I think doing the sit down has really, really been a training ground for me and helping me um, understand how to make it work for myself yeah, yeah. so it's definitely something I'm really I'm looking to go into now and just I don't know how I don't I'll probably have to message you later on but yeah sure I don't know what the route is but I'm, I'm more open to I think doing this platform has maybe more open um to it so yeah okay. maybe we might, we might co-host a, an event soon <laughs> well, and, I think, <laughs> and, I, and I think it's amazing how you said that because I think one thing that people don't know is that there's not just one avenue. I mean, like you said, there's weddings, there's corporate, there's presenting, there's radio, there's TV, there's there's voiceovers. There's, there's so many different kind of yeah. different areas. So, yeah, possibilities are endless. Endless. So, thank you. Fully fresh. Thank you for your time for 21 questions. Um, it's been good chatting with you and just finding out about your journey and, you know, who you are inside. Like, sometimes people will just see you as the extrovert folly mm. um but there's different different sides to you and but all of those tie into who you are a lover of god a father a, you know a husband and just an all-round lover of people so like we celebrate you man uh we're going to be making sure like i said anybody that comes on this platform the whole aim is that if i bring you on this platform it's because i endorse who you are as a person and what you do um so any we're going to be like you said, CCTV, we're going to always be watching what you're doing and just anytime we can just be promoting and just supporting you. So continue to do what you're doing, man. And um, man, we Quite. salute you, man. We salute you. Thank you for having me. It's, it's, it's an no honor. worries. It's an honor. No worries at all. Thank you so much. No problem. Take care. Say it to the family, man. I will do. Likewise. All right, bro. Take care. See you, everyone. Thank you. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for joining us for... 21 questions were fully fresh. In the comment section, we've got one minute and 25 seconds. I want to know how you found it. Go, whether it's one word, whether it's a sentence, whether there's something that really connected with you, throw it in the comment section um, right about now. <laughs> for me to leave it out. Um, thank you so much for joining us. If it is your first time, make sure you go after this, click the link in the bio and go and watch all the other episodes and via our YouTube channel, uh, via our podcast and platforms as well. We've, been, we've got like 17, 18 episodes of people sharing their stories and sharing empower, you know, powerful um, developments in their life and how they've got to where they are. Um, so if you've just caught this and you're catching the tail end, once this ends, it's going to be on the profile on Instagram, so you can watch it all the way back. But I'm saying again, Go back, click the link in the bio and go and watch all the other ones um, that we've been doing. Thank you so much. Yes, Beaches. Yeah, he's, he was so calm. I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Different side. Um, definitely. Who else? What else are you not saying? You said, um, I forgot Folly's prize. Do you know what, Becky? I didn't have a prize. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rejig this prize thing because I think I ran out of prizes. I'm going to think of something. Thank you for that.
Um, nine seconds remaining. All right, guys, I got to go. Thank you for joining us. Next Thursday, we're back again. Nine.